One of the big problems with modern art It's that it's a bunch of bullshit. And you have no idea how often a curator will come up with some fucking solution, napkin on the table, fantastic. I say, why? Why am I going to be so goddamn inspired by that napkin? Well, the idea, the idea is what? And so on. And then, constantly, we search out what it is that makes people feel emotionally involved and emotionally challenged and emotionally provoked into something. When you asked before what's photography in Mexico and the contribution, I think that we, we're contributing a huge amount of things. Because Mexico is very visually oriented and has been since pre-Columbian times. This is a culture which is centered around visual approaches. Certain cultures are more, more musical, certain cultures are more poetic, Nicaragua, you go and everybody is a poet. You go to certain other countries and everybody is a, an athlete. There are some countries where... Every, so, in Mexico, everybody is visually or, or oriented and has always been. Labels are all the, over the place. Galleries, this, that, and a bunch of crap. Everybody's living like in the 50s. How can you afford to want to look backward when you don't have time to look forward? Why do I want to make a daguerreotype today? So you like the style, fine. To make it in that style just for the sake of the style is stupid. It's like a writer being in a mort with calligraphy. I'm a novelist, but my calligraphy is wonderful. Okay. And that's why I find that this whole structure of galleries, wanting prints, photographers looking to make prints, like in the 50s, it's all such a bunch of nonsense. While at the same time all these things are moving forward, they're, uh, they're going to look around and say, shit, we're... Uh, they're, they're the ones who are going to start complaining yeah, the market is gone, this is not, I can't make a living, and so on. Where were you training for what's coming? Because instead of what was, something new emerges. So the first thought that comes to mind is as long as we keep seeing ourselves as photographers, we come up with the same answer. This, 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 ma, <laughs> but as a matter of fact, we are in a different place altogether. Now, what is it that we would be able to call ourselves instead of photographers? And that is storytellers. The moment that you say, I'm a storyteller, then all of a sudden all kinds of new thoughts come up and you come up with new solutions. Let's look at what you're doing. You're telling stories and you're telling stories with video over a channel 
that didn't exist before. And I, as a viewer, can see it through a channel that didn't exist before. You couldn't even dream of doing what you were doing 10 years ago. And here you are. You can do it. You can distribute it. And I can view it as somebody who's interested in the subject matter. Now, how can you not take that into account when you're talking about content? It is content. You cannot approach photography like that is separate. It's like a fish not talking about the fishbowl. A fish has to talk about the fishbowl because it's in the fishbowl. It isn't separate. If we cannot view ourselves as a fish in the fishbowl from the outside, we can't get the whole picture. And if we can't get the whole picture, how can we understand where we could go or what we could do? Now, the fantastic thing today is that this fishbowl keeps changing shape every day. So it's no longer that I can go from A to B within the fishbowl. The fishbowl can be, and we are going to have in six months virtual reality all over the place. Well, that's related to photography. That's related to storytelling. That's related to everything that we're doing, have been done, and will be doing. How can you not take that into account? And if you don't take it into account, then what are you going to come up with an 8x10 camera to take landscapes that were done 150 years ago? I mean, what nonsense is that? When young people come to me, because interestingly enough, young people have a tendency to like very much analog photography and old processes. And I say, Let's think about this for a moment. Instead of looking towards the future, you're looking to the future in a rear view mirror. Now, how can that function? Well, but I think it's lovely to capture those romantic moments. I say, look, there's romantic moments in everything you do in life. It depends upon you. It doesn't depend upon a process. The process doesn't create the romanticism in something. I don't think that today there is a living human being on earth who can tell me what photography is going to be like in five years. In five years, not 200 years. Do I want to be a Cartier-Bresson? Maybe if I wanted to be a Cartesian, th 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 that's not the world I'm living in. And if it's not the world I'm living in, what is it that I can contribute? What is it that I can contribute at this particular moment in time? When the Gutenberg Press first appeared, therefore the books, the world had a reason to learn how to read and write. Before that, why? There were no books, nothing to read, except for a few doctors and monks. But the population, nothing. There is a visual illiteracy throughout the world. And this is now going to change in which we're going to have an increasingly important reason for acquiring the equivalent of what used to be able to read, now visual literacy. 
Because, okay, after you've taken all the cats and dogs around you, and after you've taken the sunset 32 times, after you've taken a number of pictures X number of times, next. How many parties with you drunk in the picture can you publish? And they still remain interesting. Not that many. So once the novelty wears down, the next thing that happens is that in the process, people have learned what else they can do. And here is where storytelling comes in. But what is it that you, what is that body of work where you can go into somebody's life and see every picture that they've ever taken? Just the idea of that is completely different. But you have to understand technology, you have to understand this, you have to understand all these things because they intertwine in ways which are completely new. It took me to publish a picture 30 years before. 30 years. Takes me today to publish 30 seconds. So when you narrow down something from 30 years to 30 seconds, how can that not change the content? We have to learn that emotions are not universal. And as you evolve and grow beyond your borders, you have to learn to decipher that the emotion that he might display coming from where he comes from does not necessarily imply that he can decipher my emotions here. In Mexico, you don't have to go to another country. It is totally different from the north to the south. Completely different. How people peak, how people walk, how people express themselves and so on. There is very few things which are universal today. We have to learn to be local and universal at the same time. When students come up and show me pictures and they, and they assume that everybody is going to decode that in the same way as they are doing it. I look at them and I say, well, why is that interesting? Who's that interesting for? And if you tell me it's for my friends, my relatives and my immediate circle, fine, no problem. But then don't expect to go beyond that and then give me a sob story because you don't do it. For me, the idea is when you write a diary, who do you write it for? I don't write a diary in order to uh, publish it on the first page of the newspaper. It's a, my diary, which if I share it with you because you asked me, let me see your diary, fine. But it's my diary. So I take a picture, it's my diary. What's the title of my work? I photograph to remember. Don't forget that. As soon as I die, everything that I have done is already obsolete. It's already obsolete. I mean, in my lifetime, what I did with I photograph to remember is obsolete after the first two years. How do you know if you won? If you can aspire that what you did becomes meaningful. And if you have one or two or three people who tell you this is really very good, then you won. <laughs>